Intestinal physiology lectures. Right, last lecture. Digestion of foodstuffs. Okay, let's start with our carbohydrates. Shh. The absorbable units of carbohydrates are what? There's three of them. Give me any. Glucose. What else? Galactose. Yeah, and? It was a joke. Glucose, galactose, and? Fructose, yeah? Okay, so maltose is made up of two, two of which kind of molecule? Two, glucose. A sucrose is made of a glucose and a? And a lactose is made of a glucose and a? Collector, very good. Okay, so, all right, let's see how you went with your pre-work, okay? Time for a kahoot, our last one together. Let's see how we go. Motility, let's play this one. Now please, as previously, no naughty names. Classic. Yeah. All right, wait for it. Here comes your pin number. Question number one. Which phase of swallowing is under voluntary control? Oh, that was quick. Didn't give you many seconds for this one. Ah, very good. Let's have a look. All right. Okay. So you know there's the oral phase of swallowing. The oral phase is when you make the conscious decision to throw the bolus of food to the back of your throat. And from there on, you go to the pharyngeal phase, which is now a reflex, and then into the esophageal phase. All right? Shh, 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 shh. Okay, so the pharyngeal phase. What happens in the pharyngeal phase? All right, first thing, you stop breathing. 
Okay, very good thing to do when you are swallowing. The uvula, the little funny thing hanging down at the back of your throat, is elevated to stop the food entering your um, nasal passages. The tongue positions up to stop the food going back into the mouth, and the epiglottis is going to cover over the trachea so the food doesn't aspirate down into the lungs. So there are not many places left for the bolus of food to go, and so the upper esophageal sphincter will relax, and through peristalsis, we will get the food moving down the esophagus. Now, there is primary peristalsis. Okay, that's the reflex started by swallowing, and that's the, um, the contraction behind the bolus and the relaxation in front of the bolus, pushing the food down. If the food doesn't get pushed all the way down to the stomach, a second wave of peristalsis will be initiated by the distension of the esophagus. Okay, back to your next question. Are we ready? How do we go with number one? Ah, oh, cool. <laughs> Someone's in my good books today. Okay, here we go. Accommodation of the stomach is required for... <laughs> is not when you go on holidays and you're looking for a, a Hilton or a, or a big four caravan park. Accommodation is when the stomach relaxes to take up the volume of the meal. Okay, if it didn't relax, the pressure within the stomach would become very high. And it's the top part of the stomach, the fundus and the body, that mainly does the relaxation. Let's just have a little quick look. All right, so... Accommodation is relaxation, all right? And there's a few reflexes here that are important, okay? The first one is receptive relaxation. That's when we're preparing to receive the food. So that reflex is initiated in the esophagus before it gets to the stomach, all right? So initiated at the pharynx. Adaptive relaxation is when the food hits the stomach, and now the, food, the stomach now accommodates and relaxes some more, because it's got a better idea of how much food's, you know, actually in the stomach, all right? So a gastro-gastric reflex, stimulation in the stomach, and the response within the stomach. And finally, the enterogastric reflex. When the food moves into the intestines, then we will have an effect in the stomach. All right. Let's go to our next kahoot. How are we going Oh, I got knocked off the top, didn't I? Okay, cool. All right. The rate of stomach contractions is about what? The rate of the stomach contractions is going to be set by what? Can you think? We were talking about this earlier. What's the rate of the contraction set by? By the slow wave. The frequency of that slow wave is what's determining the frequency of the stomach contractions, the peristalsis, okay? All right, so that's what's determining that it is set at about three to five per minute. It's not variable because the slow wave frequency in the stomach is not variable, okay? All right, and it's much slower. So the interstitial cells of Kajal, which set the, the pace in the stomach, much slower than, say, your SA node, where we're setting a rate of 60 to 90 per minute, only three to five per minute. Let's have a look. All right, so... In your stomach, the kind of motility you have is mixing. Next one, let's see who's at the top. Rick. Okay. Oh, 61 players with the three-answer streak. Good kids. 
All right, here we go to the other end of the vowels. Although you probably could have guessed, really, I suppose, huh? All right. Quick review of the defecation reflex. Now, when you wake up in the morning, your colon thinks, ah, oh, let's have some mass movement, okay? The colon, motility in the colon is two things. It's either horstrations, which are mixing, they're like segmentation in the small bowel, or they're mass movements, which is moving stuff through the bowel, okay? And we move it into the rectum, and the rectum distends, and we get stretch. What else have we got? How are we going? Oh, some new people at the top. Rick Sanchez is still there. Okay, were you listening when I was talking before? Which of the following is a feed forward reflex? reflex. Remember, the first part of the reflex is where the stimulus occurs. The second part of the reflex is where the response occurs. So the gastrogastric stimulation within the stomach, response within the stomach. Iliogastric response, uh, sorry, the stimulus is in the ilium, okay, and the response is back, back up the gastrointestinal tract, back up in the stomach. That's a feedback reflex. Gastroileal, okay, the stimulus in the stomach giving us response in the ileum is feed forward. And enterogastric, entero is again talking about the intestines, but in a general form, okay, covers the ileum, the colon, kind of everything. Enterogastric, the intestines affecting the, uh, the stomach. Let me just show you, uh, and this is an interesting reflex, the gastroileal, because it's one of the few that involves a hormone, and it involves gastrin. Okay, so because the stimulus is in the stomach, and we have all those G cells in the stomach, the G cells will travel through the blood as an endocrine secretion and affect the ileocecal valve, all right, moving uh, debris and chyme, or what's left over of di the products of digestion that are in the ileum through the ileocecal valve and into the colon. Okay. Oh, we better see who's winning. Oh, there might just be one more question. Here's a very important question, especially if this is our last lecture together. <laughs> Okay, so um, just a quick word. Uh, we're also using 801 at the moment, so your new quizzes will go into 1-800-800. The previous quiz will be kicked over into 801. Okay, so if you miss a quiz, as you know, we've been having quizzes after each lecture. Now that other people are going to be talking at you and getting you to do lots of stuff, they'll be weekly in their turnover until we get to Stuvac. What happens at Stuvac? The quizzes become daily and you get SAQs, all right, up until the day of your? Ah, oh, you're so cool, you're good, okay. Excellent, excellent work. Um, oh, winners. Oh, no, ah, oh, cool. I'll come around with my um, prizes, so those three people, if they can wave at me shortly when I come around. I'd like you to start on activity one on your sheet, please. Activity one, everybody. 